This is a demonstration of live coding in Python version 2. I've built a tool that lets you run your Python code as you type it. For example, this code draws a 100 by 100 pixel square. When I change the forward distance to 50, the square immediately updates. I don't even have to save the file. In this video, I'll demonstrate two things. Live turtle graphics that make a fun learning tool, and a live coding display that can be used with regular code to show you what's happening inside it. To try it yourself, visit donkirkby.github.com. To see it in action, watch this video or read the tutorial. Python already comes with a turtle module, so what's the difference? To use the regular turtle, I need to add a little startup code, and then I need to save and run. Every time I change the code, I have to save and run again. Of course, I don't do that every time. Instead, I predict the result by running through the code in my head. One of this project's main goals for live coding is to let programmers' brains focus on writing code instead of running code. If you can see the code's results laid out in front of you, you don't have to hold it all in your head. Still, I sometimes like to run the regular turtle graphics code to see the animation of how the turtle moves along its path. I can make my code run both ways by putting it into a function and then calling it different ways depending on whether I'm running as the main script or in live coding mode. Another benefit to live coding like this is that I can be creative in a different way by reacting to the results of my changes. How about an example? When I added the feature for filling polygons, I played with squares and triangles, pentagons. Then I tried a star. And the middle wasn't filled. After the surprise wore off, I realized that the center is actually outside the polygon when you draw a star this way. That gave me the idea to see how it would deal with a spiral. So I made the turtle go around the star five times and made the forward distance longer and longer. That's cool, a striped star. Then I made it go around 50 times and it filled the screen. At this point, I wondered what would happen if I changed the angle and the result blew my mind. I didn't set out to draw a pinwheel pattern and work out how to achieve that. I just stumbled across it while exploring how filled polygons work. When you combine live coding's rapid response with an intuitive interface, like Turtle Graphics, it's easier to learn and create with. I think that was Brett Victor's point in his Inventing on Principle video that inspired me to build this tool. So that was the fun learning tool. Now what can you do with real code? I did create a Turtle class that writes to PDF, so that will let you use Turtle Graphics in a few more situations. But the main feature is a different view that helps you visualize what's happening inside your code so you don't have to keep running it in your head. I'll start with a trivial chunk of code that first assigns and then modifies a variable. That's easy to step through in your head and see that S is now hello world. Remember though that I want to let your brain focus on writing code instead of stepping through it. I open the live coding display and it shows me the contents of the variable at each step. Let's do something more interesting and write a library function that does binary search for a value in a sorted array. The live coding will show us what's happening in our code so we don't have to hold it all in our heads. It's a bad search function that never finds anything, but let's see how it works when we call it. You can see the input parameters at the start of the function and the return value at the end. Let's start looking for the value in the array. And the first place to look is in the middle. We calculate the lower and upper bounds of the array. And the middle is just the average. What 
is that value in the middle. Let's see if that's one we're looking for. That was lucky. It was in the first place we looked. And you can see the calculations as it goes. You see an abstract formula in the code and the concrete value of that formula in the live coding display. However, a search function usually won't find the item we're searching for on the first try. So let's look for an item earlier in the list and use a while loop to find it. at the contents of the loop. If that wasn't what we're looking for, decide whether to look in the lower or upper half of the array. There we go. The loop runs twice, and each run adds a column to the display showing the calculations. Now let's look for an item later in the list. Now we need to look in the upper half. Oops, I get an index error. Without the live coding display, I would just get a trace back that shows where the error happened, but not how it happened. Now I can walk back from the error to see where things went wrong. Mid is the index value, and it's calculated at the top of the loop. The two values that go into it, low and high, are both 2. So they should average to 2. Ah, I need parentheses to calculate the average. And now it works. What happens if we try to find a value that's not in the list? I guess that while true wasn't such a good idea. We're stuck in an inf infinite loop. If you want to see some of the later loops, you can scroll over to the right. From the third run on, the, loop, the values in the loop don't change, so we probably want to exit from the second or third run. If you look at the end of the second run, you can see that high is lower than low. That means that we've searched all the way from both ends to meet in the middle, and it's time to give up. At this point, I think I'm done. I can add a few entries and search for them. sure I get the values I expect. Also, if this were a real library module, I wouldn't want to execute this call at the end of the file. So I only do it when I'm in live coding mode. Remember, you can try this tool yourself by visiting donkirkby.github.com. Help me test it and report your bugs. I'd also love to hear about any other projects working on the same kinds of tools.